Okay, so now I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, a tutorial on soldering. And I know most of you know how to solder already, but uh, if you're just getting started, this will hopefully be very helpful. Um, for soldering, you're going to want to use good solder. This is Kester. It's very good solder. It's about $40 a roll. Uh, then you're going to need a soldering iron, of course. Now you can go get an inexpensive one, like a pen type. Uh, when you're soldering very large gauge wire and um, bullet connectors and the kinds of things that you're going to be soldering when you build your quadcopter, you're going to need a lot of power. So I suggest that you get uh, a good soldering iron. This is a Weller WT-CPT. It's one of the most common ones out there. You know, uh, 10 gauge wire like this. Uh, that extra copper in the wire acts as a heat sink, drawing the heat away from what you're trying to solder. So it becomes very difficult if you don't have enough power in your soldering iron. This weller has enough power so that uh, even when you're soldering and it's, a, and it's touching a heat sink and drawing the heat away, this will keep the temperature up to 800 degrees so we can keep, uh, keep soldering and um, heat the entire end of the wire up. Okay. Another uh, very important little tool that you can get yourself is a pair of helping hands. They have a magnifying glass that helps sometimes. Um, then these two little alligator clips allow you to hold the wire and connector because they're going to get very hot. And if you try to hold one end, you're never going to get a good solder connection because it's going to be moving around and you'll end up with a, a cold solder joint. I'm going to show you just some of the basic connections that we make. Uh, and we'll start with just a bullet connector. So I've got, let's see, we'll use a plush 25 amp. I've got the three wires that are going to go to um, the uh, uh, brushless motor. And remember, this is going to be the hot end, so I'm going to need to attach a female bullet connector. And that's one of these guys right here. And it has a deep end and then a a shallow end. The shallow end is where the wire goes. Okay, so now I've got my helping hands here and I'm gonna put the wire. What's important to understand is that what conducts the heat is the surface area. So it's usually good to have a little bit of solder on the iron and then apply it to the wire, get some more solder on there. That's when the smoke starts. And even if your solder is $40 a roll, don't put it on lightly. Put a lot on. Now, here's another reason you have the safety glasses on. You, one trick I have is oh, I heat it up, and then I flick the wire down. So don't do this on your dining room table. You're going to make a mess. But I, I want to get you know, the big blob of solder off. So I've got my wire tinned, and now I'm going to take my bullet connector, and you notice there's two holes. There's a tiny hole, and they're all a little different. But there's a tiny hole here on this one. And that is basically just to let air out of the connector part, I guess. Uh, and then there's a bigger hole on the shallow cup, and that's to help you get the solder in to the connector. So I put that on the other side of my helping hands. I can't tell you how much these helping hands help make really good connections. And then I'm going to put my now tinned wire in as straight as I can to the connector. You notice there isn't a lot of extra uh, wire showing here. Uh, don't strip off a whole bunch. I've only got maybe two eighths of an inch here. Uh, then I put the soldering iron in that little hole and give it a little solder and just wait. Heat is your friend when you're soldering. What you don't want to do is paint solder onto a connection. So I'm, I'm letting it wick in on its own. And then once a little's in there, I'll actually go on the back of the connector here until that cup is filled with solder. Now, it, I've got the solder in there. It's melted. Why am I keeping the soldering iron here? I want the whole thing to heat up. I want the whole connection, the wire, and the bullet connector to heat up so I have a really good solder connection. Then you're going to have to let it cool down for a second.
Okay, so uh, now when you're making a, a power harness or wiring harness, uh, eventually you're going to have connections to each one of your ESCs and you're going to have four wires coming from Dean connectors. Each one of these Dean connectors, there aren't actually Dean connectors on this, this is just an example, but uh, these would be the negative leads going to some Dean's connectors and those would connect to the ESCs. Then you're stuck with four really big wires on the other side that need to connect to a battery wire, right? This is, this is a difficult solder joint to make. I'm going to show you a little trick that I use. First, let's go ahead and tin these wires. So I'm going to strip each one about a quarter of an inch. Now I've got my four. I'm going to twist these up a little bit. I want nice tight bundles. And then my battery wire, which is also only about a quarter of an inch. Now, I'm going to tin these. I'm going to show you how this is a bit harder to tin than the small ESC wires. Let's uh, get a little bit better angle. All right, so I'm going to get this started. A little bit of solder on my soldering iron. Put it on the wire. Watch a little TV. It's going to take a minute. you got to let this sucker heat up. I'm going to add some more solder. It's going to begin to wick into the wire. And it's a big solder mess when you do this. You see it's starting to wick in. There's a big bubble of solder on the bottom here, but that's all right. You also want to wick in from the end. And that's pretty good. Now, here's my little trick. Do a little flick. Some of it already fell off, but that'll get all the extra. I'm going to go ahead and tin the other ones. Okay, now, here's the trick. I've got four conductors here, and I've, I need to take these four wires and connect it to this wire to make a, my wiring harness. Here's what I do. I, I grab some single-strand wire. I strip off a bunch, so I'm left with just, and I know it's difficult to see, but I'm left with just the, the uh, conductor. I'm going to strip off a little bit more here. And then I'm going to take just that piece and make a loop and then cross it. I'm going to put this wire loop in my hemostats. I think that's what they're called. I'm not that kind of doctor, so. Okay. Then, I line up all my conductors so I've got a nice square like this. And I put the loop over. Still got the hemostats on there. Then I take my fourth conductor and I put it right in the center. And it's going to be a little frustrating, but you've got to get it all in there. Now, if you're trying to do this with wires that are hot and with a soldering iron in your hand it's it's a mess and it's very hard to do and you're gonna burn yourself so that's what this trick is all about this trick is about holding the wires in position as you solder it because I've got so much conductor in here so much heat sink and you can see what I'm doing here I'm twisting this and making it tighter and then I'm gonna snip off okay so it should look like this. Notice this uh, loop wire is about halfway up the tinned part of the wire and it's pretty uniform. You know, ideally I want the uh, battery wire, the long one, to be right in the center. But this isn't soldered yet and I can, I can handle it, I can move it around so it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to solder. So now 
and I can begin to heat it up. And there, it's starting to wick in to the wire. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like a big blob of solder on top, and then it wicks in. I'm going to quickly turn it so it doesn't cool down too much. It'll dull over just a little bit. And that's the finished product. I want to cut this off. It's also very important that you don't have any sharp ends. And you notice it's, it's pretty good all the way around. I don't have any uh, sharp ends. And then you want to take a big piece of heat shrink and put it over this whole big mess. Now this is kind of hot right now, so I can't do that. Let's pause for a second. All right, so it's cooled down a little bit. Still pretty warm, actually. But I'm going to go ahead and put it over quickly and then use the heat gun. And that's the finished product. And this, these would be going to each ESC, and then this side would go to the battery. I have two of those, one for negative, one for positive, but that's all you really need for a wire harness. Uh, you can use separate connectors in here. I don't I don't like to use too many connectors if possible. I don't even typically use them on the ESC side, um, but it, it does make it easier if you want to if you need to switch out ESCs.